I'm Scott Harris, Executive Director of the University of Mary Washington Museums in Fredericksburg, Virginia. During the COVID-19 emergency, we will be sharing a short video each week related to Gary Melcher's Home and Studio and the James Monroe Museum, a Melcher's Minute and a Monroe Minute. Full disclosure, some of them, like this one, will be a bit longer than a minute. Our first Monroe Minute concerns a topic uppermost on everyone's mind today, virus epidemics and pandemics. An epidemic is an event in which a disease is actively spreading. In contrast, the term pandemic relates to geographic spread and is used to describe a disease that affects a whole country or the entire world. During James Monroe's lifetime, 1758 to 1831, all parts of the globe suffered periodic epidemics and pandemics of cholera, influenza, measles, yellow fever, and even the granddaddy of them all, bubonic plague. These maladies occurred at a time in human history when sanitation was rudimentary at best, communication over long distances was slow and often erratic, and while vaccinations for smallpox came into use during the 18th century, medical science did not acquire true understanding of germs and viruses until late in the 19th century. Although he would have been unfamiliar with the term flatten the curve, James Monroe took action to do that very thing in response to an epidemic during his first term as governor of Virginia. On August 23, 1800, he instituted a quarantine on ships traveling from Norfolk into other port cities of Virginia, including Fredericksburg, in an effort to reduce the spread of yellow fever throughout the Commonwealth. Here's what his proclamation said. Whereas satisfactory information has been received that some contagious disease exists at Norfolk, which without due precaution may be communicated to other parts of this commonwealth, and it being the duty of the executive to prevent the spreading of the said disease by causing the laws made and provided for that purpose to be faithfully executed. I have therefore thought it fit, with the advice of the Council of State, to issue this proclamation, enjoining all vessels coming from the said port of Norfolk up James River to perform quarantine at Jordan's Point, and all other vessels coming from said port to any other port within this commonwealth to perform quarantine at the places heretofore designated for such ports respectively, for the term of 15 days, to be computed from the time they severally sailed from the said port of Norfolk. Quarantines for ships and their crews were not uncommon in this era and could last from a couple of weeks to up to a month or more. The quarantine at Fredericksburg was lifted on November 4, 1800. Epidemics were common occurrences in Washington, D.C., when James Monroe was Secretary of State and later President. During one such period, April 1815, Monroe wrote to Thomas Jefferson that he, quote, had suffered much from a very severe attack of the sciatic, or rather, of the prevailing epidemic which seized on the weaker parts of the system. From this I soon recovered, so far as to attend to business, but have not regained my strength, and am affected by cold and sometimes fever on the slightest exposure. Monroe had written to James Madison earlier that month inquiring after Dolly Madison's health with regard to the same outbreak. We hope Mrs. Madison's indisposition was the effect of the fatigue of the journey only, and not the epidemic. Like local, state, and federal leaders today, James Monroe confronted the multitude of challenges posed by viral epidemics at home and abroad. Then as now, disease threatened not only the health of people, but also domestic and foreign commerce, public education, and national security. As we strive to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic, it may be of some comfort to reflect on the fact that human society has withstood similar adversity and loss in the past. We are truly all in this together, and together we will get through. For more on the life and times of James Monroe, visit www.jamesmonroemuseum.org, look for archived lectures on the museum's YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Thank you for watching this week's Monroe Minute.